you know, you were the first proper interview I ever did on air. We yeah. cleaned up. We cleaned up nice. You know, we got these people coming over to record. Got our you know. Sunday best on doing. You know. <laughs> There's a name that you don't want to say too loud. <laughs> Everyone is listening to me, and yeah. I don't want them to. So <laughs> hit me, baby, one more time. Anytime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think we've spoken about the Ninja Turtles before. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, when, when I first found out I, I was having watched. a child, I was like Ninja Turtles. Ninja Turtles. <laughs> I. Uh, <laughs> what were we saying? <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, what's your favorite cartoon? Anyway, um, what is this? I need to know more about this. Mark Hayes, wow. Who would have thought... Many, many, many moons ago, back in what, like the early 2000s, yeah, yeah. when I first met you, that uh, we'd be doing a podcast together. How cool is this? It's, just, it's quite something, man. You, yeah. were, you know, you were the first proper interview I ever did on air. Really? Ever in my life. At UCT Radio? Yes. Back yeah. in the day? Yeah, yeah, back in the day. Yeah. yeah. My wow. was, band was 12th Avenue. And then we yes. Were, we were like kids. All of us, actually. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I was also sort of semi-stage manager for a band called Seven Day Story, which oh, was, right. which were, you know, you guys did a few gigs with as Damn, well. I forgot that you were involved in that. <laughs> I was, yes, <laughs> with so Aiden Harper. Oh, wow, <laughs> Going man. back in the day. There's a name that you don't want to say too loud. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I mean, uh, wow, we go back quite a, quite a way. So um, Mark Hayes's journey from there to here has has been a, a long one with many twists and turns. We're going to get to a, a lot of that in a short while, but go back to the very beginning. Um, growing up, where did you grow up, and uh, and how did you eventually get into you know music? What made you? Go into um, music. I was born in Goodwood, uh, mm. which is in Cape Town. And we stayed there for a, a couple of years. Um, music was like, if I, if I think back, there was never like not a noise in our house. We mm. never had a quiet house. We, we, uh, my family, are, we, we're loud people. Mm. Even now, um, uh, it's like, it's a loud vibe. I mean, you guys are, are here in my house now and, and it's um, shockingly quiet. But, <laughs> um, but, but if the, if the I, family was here. I, is, this, is, this on, is this on our behalf? <laughs> <laughs> Did you say, uh, look, we, yeah, need, we, we got these. We uh, cleaned up, we cleaned up nice. You we know, got we, these <laughs> people coming over to record. Got you our know. Sunday best on doing. You know. um, my, my family, uh, my grandfather and my grandmother uh, were quite heavily involved in, in our church. And um, as a child, I, my dad loves to tell the story about how you'd walk in and you'd hear this like child singing screaming slash screaming I suppose with headphones on in front of the um, radio mm. and I'd be singing along to whatever was on the radio at the time so radio mm -hmm. was like a big part of part of our lives when growing up it was always in the car it was always playing in the day um, and we'd pick up things my cousins were really cool as well they would like tape things off cassette tapes oh me too so, yeah, me then, too <laughs> so like the new Duran Duran would come out or Madonna's new one or whatever and then my cousins would be like listen to this Mark check it out and I was, I was the young one out, yes. of, the, out mm. of the family so um, I think I was apparently I was cute so I would dance and sing along and they, and they thought that was a hoot and at some point um, my grandfather had said look he's got a he's actually got a pretty nice voice and I must have been around about four years old somewhere around about there cool where um, unbeknownst to me it was just decided that I would sing in front of the church uh, with other people but it was like a I think it was a concert I don't really know the whole story but I I know or the feeling I remember the feeling of it of standing up there and looking up and going everyone is listening to me and yeah. <laughs> I don't want them to. So, <laughs> so I, but I, but the, the thing I remember clearly was like, but you have to, you're here now. So yeah. get the job done. They want to hear it. So I put my hands in my pockets. I looked straight down at the ground and I sang, I sang the song and they pulled me up like three or four more times to, to do it over and over. And I had no idea why. Um, I was told by my parents that, that it was good. Um, and I, yeah, I never really thought of myself as anything other than like, you know, just Mark, the kid, you know. Mm. So I'd, I never really worried with that sort of stuff again. And then um, my younger brother was born. Um, I was about five and a half or so, and we moved to Belleville. Um, my parents, for work reasons or whatever it was. So we moved out there. My grandparents ended up moving in with us. 
Um, and then my grandmother brought a piano into the house, mm -hmm. which was epic because like, I didn't even know that she could play. I knew that they were like in the church choir and stuff like that. And I, yeah. I'd heard that my uncle, you know, he had like stuff in his room, like uh, reel to reel tapes and that sort of thing, but it didn't like click that he was in a band. So at around about like six, seven years old or so, my grandmother says, Mark's expressing interest in the piano. Uh, so she goes to my mom and she says like, you should really send this kid for piano lessons. And mm -hmm. she, they ask me and I go, yeah, cool. Piano's interesting. I, I'd like to learn to make music. It feels like something I want to do. So I start doing that, uh, getting somewhere with it. And we go out one day and we watch my uncle's band um, at a place called Bertie's Landing, which is, I think, where Key oh, Four is now. I right? yeah. Bertie's Landing. Uh, out in the waterfront. The yes. water. It was like a new, the waterfront was like a brand new vibe. <laughs> yes, no one yes, had been yes. there. So it was like going out for fish dinner and stuff. And there's my uncle's band. And you, you hear the words in your head, band, but you don't click like, like it's it's anything yes. epic and the first time the bass drum hit and it's like slammed through my chest i was like what is this i need to know more about this this <laughs> give is me, give me, give yeah me. it was like a full-on addiction and it still is you know when we do sound checks to this day like i when when i love to stand there when they when they check the drums it's always the first thing we check mm. at a venue and that feeling that hits you in the chest that's still me going that mm, kick yeah that <laughs> hit me one more time let's go in the vein in the vein let's so go that's what britney was talking about man uh, yeah <laughs> hit me baby one more time anytime so um i was hooked from there i don't think okay. i ate my food i was just completely stuck to the band my uncle was the, the lead singer in the band and the guitars was what it was the thing that like really got me i was like look at that that is just something and the sounds that came out of it, and the variations of sounds that came out of it, and i was like yeah, I, I want to play that thing. So on the in the car ride home, my parents sitting in the front seats, me and my brother in the back. I'm like, Mom, Dad, I really, really want to play guitar. And they were like, where's this coming from? And I said, I just, you, you have to get me a guitar. I have mm. to play it. And they did the thing that parents always do. They're like, sure, Mark, whatever. Like, yeah, cool. Yeah, well, maybe we'll get you a guitar, see how it goes. And I, I was relentless for about the better part of a month. I have to play guitar. And they said, focus on the piano and learn your stuff and all that. And then for like, I think it might've been a birthday present. So, um, they bought me a... The, the cheapest, simplest, crappiest, uh, and I love you, mom and dad, but I mean, it was like, <laughs> I well, know, you I know, know this now. Well, I know what they were doing. They got it for me because kids lose interest in things. Yes. And it's like, he's just started on the piano and then I want to play cricket. Then I want to play rugby. Then I want to play hockey. Then I want to do yes. this. Then I yeah. want to be a draw animator or whatever. I want. I mean, you know, just things. And you're not going to get the most expensive thing for a kid who's just trying to start something. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know some parents who, who do that sort of thing and, it, and, and, you know, um, it doesn't always work out. You know, you, you end yeah. up with some really great piece of equipment and I, I'm I'm a firm believer in it because I got, I got to thank my parents big time <coughs> because if it wasn't for that, I had to work really hard to, to work that guitar, to get yes. it to work well. Yeah. And I played that guitar all the way through into high school. Um, in fact, I played it all the way through to past high school. Mm. I didn't have another acoustic guitar. Um, and even my guitar teacher back at, at that time said like, well, you really have to like give this guitar like a lot of energy and a lot of power to get it to do something. And when he tried to play it to show me something, he'd be like, wow, I'm not getting the response I want from it. Mm. So I was forced to go kind of off the off the beaten path and i developed my own like style in fact i used to cup my thumb around it and, and it was like a big no-no in the classical guitar world like yes you'd smack my hand and you'd be like don't do that you know, you're not yeah supposed yeah to yeah do that. <laughs> corporal punishment we yeah, touch yeah. It again. <laughs> <laughs> and i went i went mad into the guitar I, and i lost a little bit of interest in the piano but i i did like the the learning factor of it so understanding music and understanding the theory um and at some point uh the in the previous school i was in i was bullied quite bad um, like beaten up, bullied, like uh, oh. for being for being overweight. In fact, yeah, it was like a, a thing. And there was a bit of a language barrier. Being an English kid, I didn't understand Afrikaans that well at that point in my life. So I, I didn't quite understand what they were saying or what they were teasing me about. But uh, but I would like I would throw attitude back at them, which is probably the worst thing you could do. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was met with with swift fury, uh, and it made me a little bit recluse. So mm. my folks, uh, with us moving to Barville, we went to another school, and I could like start fresh. And nobody really knew anything about me. I kind of kept to myself. I had two really good friends, Damon and Sean. I, I, I'll never forget those guys. They, they were like my, my bosom buddies for forever. And we did things that normal kids do, like ride bicycles and, you know, watch the Ninja Turtles and stuff oh, like that. Yeah, Remember yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think we've spoken about the Ninja Turtles of course we before. Have. Yeah, yeah, of <laughs> when, when I first found out I, I was having watched, a child, I was like, Ninja Turtles, Ninja Turtles. <laughs> I watched the original Ninja Turtles from 1990, the, the first movie, wow. uh, literally the other day. Flame, right? Yeah. I, I don't know why I decided <laughs> to watch it, but I had a craving for it and I put it but on and watched it. Who was your favourourite Ninja Turtles? Oh, obviously, Michelangelo. No, obviously mine too. Boys, man. Come on, guys. Raphael. Yeah. No, mine was Michelangelo. 
because you're such a bad boy, you had to be the rapper. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Mine was Michelangelo. Yeah, yeah. No, Mikey, completely me. Yeah, even now in the new movies, I'm like, Mikey's the one. Yeah, yeah. He's the one yeah. I want to listen to. I want to watch. He's eating pizza, swinging his stuff around. Yeah, dude. What's My, up? Yeah, Mikey's like, is so chill. Carefree, man. living the good life. You know, <laughs> exactly. like, yeah, Mikey's, Mikey's the bomb. Where, where, is, where is I have this, um, I perhaps have this sarcastic streak to me and I perhaps have this like uh, irritable streak to me sometimes. I think I think Raphael almost fits my personality. Yeah, Raphael's a guy, totally. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, <laughs> what were we saying? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what's your favorite cartoon? Anyway, um, so we, we were mates for, for like forever and I think somewhere around about, what do they call it now, grade six, so standard four when we were uh -huh. youngins, you know, back for those who don't know what that means. <laughs> um, standard four, grade six, I had to do an oral at school uh -huh. and it was it was one of those times where the teachers go like whatever you want talk about anything something that excites you something that's your thing and i was petrified beyond belief i had no idea what to do and I, I spoke to my folks and i was like look the only thing i really give a crap about is the guitar that's all i care about you know um, i'm not going to be the, the world-class hockey player i'm not gonna i'm not gonna bat for the for the for the pro tiers like it's just that i i understood that even from young yeah so um i said let me just show the guitar and see what's up and i actually went into the oral completely unprepared it was the first time in my life that i spoke about something without like you know kids write down the stuff and they get yes. the notes and they and they figure out what they're going to do and i walked in the door with the guitar around my around my waist and the kids looked at me and they were like is that mark like since when like you, you haven't said anything about this and i spoke all about it how it's built what it is what it's done the history of it etc you know just all, all of the top of my head which and and i was having an epiphany in the moment doing it going wow you really do love this thing like this is <laughs> this is your thing you yeah, know like you really exactly. do and then i was done with the oral and everyone clapped hands and it was amazing and then the teacher and it's this i can still get the butterflies and she's like would you mind playing something for us so we can hear you know what the guitar sounds like oh, and, I, wow. and i was like lord jesus here we go like, <laughs> take the wheel here we go like yeah. and i and i did and i played and they ended up I, I, they made me play like over and over and over and then she paraded me in front of all the other classrooms oh my god she literally took me to every teacher and said mrs pfeiffer was a, mrs ellis was her name and she took me to to every classroom and said check what mark brought for his oral and played and i had to play a song i think I, it was three four hours later played a gig I man played, i did like my first set of shows you know? <laughs> played a like, gig. you should have put the hat on <laughs> how, how how was your playing at that point? Crap, probably. I, you know, <laughs> I, I don't think it was great. You know, but the thing the thing about me, as I, I deal with a lot of kids now with the studio and that sort of thing, and I meet a lot of young kids doing what I do. And the the I think the consensus is in the beginning is you learn chords and you learn to strum. You do campfire mm. playing, you know, yeah. play kumbaya and get into that vibe. And I didn't do. A lot of that, I was very much into Eric Clapton, and who was a lead guitarist, and, mm -hmm. and, uh, and riffs and stuff like that. So I would um, bounce, but, but unbeknownst to me, I had a style already where I would bounce between chords into lead, bounce chords into lead. And I wasn't singing it, I just played the guitar. Yeah. It was, there was no, singing was not part of the agenda for me. I, I'd been told by my folks and my family, like, you've got a lovely voice, sing and that sort of thing, mm. but I was super shy and I didn't want to do it. Um, and then something like sparked in me. I don't know, I joined the school choir and I, I was enjoying that. And, and again, but I was kind of just staying just below the radar just to not really be noticed. <laughs> um, and when I went to high school, um, standard six, grade eight, uh, that's, that's where things really exploded. <laughs>